as I think about Thanksgiving, one of the, the holidays in the Jewish calendar that reminds me of bounty is, is actually the holiday of Sukkot, which came just about a month ago. And what's interesting about Hanukkah, and forgive me for the history lesson, is that Hanukkah is actually Sukkot postponed. So the Hasmoneans were in, engaged in this war with the Syrian Greeks, and when it was time to celebrate Sukkot, they couldn't, they were too busy. And so finally, after the temple was cleaned and repurified, then they celebrated Sukkot, an eight-day holiday, and that became Hanukkah. So there's this wonderful um, sort of triangulation of Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, and Sukkot, Sukkot being a celebration of bounty and harvest, uh, which gave birth to Hanukkah, and which now coincides with Thanksgiving. Hanukkah has been so closely linked with, with Christmas, which, by the way, should not come as a surprise. In the darkest time of the year, we're all year yearning and searching for light. And so Christmas is a holiday of light, Hanukkah a holiday of light, Kwanzaa a holiday of light. So I think that sometimes we um, get uncomfortable with the proximity or the, or the, the relationship that Hanukkah and Christmas have, have, uh, have built together. And certainly there are very different messages, and Christmas is a far more important holiday than Hanukkah. But I think, again, even there we can find core messages, messages of light, bringing light into our dark world. For non-Jews and Jews alike, an important message that Thanksgiving and Hanukkah can give us is that there are different ways that we can approach the struggle for religious freedom. For the pilgrims, it was to leave their homeland. It was to go to a land that they didn't know and to leave everything behind. And we, we sort of think about this brave journey, this courageous journey that they made. I think we sometimes forget about how difficult it must have been for them to leave their entire lives behind, their families. Um, for the Hasmoneans in the time of, Mac of the Maccabees, um, it was to fight back against a, a, a ruling and brutal uh, uh, authority that was suppressing them. And yet for others today in America, we don't leave our homes, we don't fight back, but we are still engaged in that struggle. And so I, I think that, that perhaps for non-Jews and Jews, it's to look at the breadth of responses that we've had throughout time to the struggle for religious freedom. And what is that struggle going to look like for the next generation? How are we gonna teach our children what it means to honor and to respect different cultures and different traditions? Will we give them the tools, the habits of mind, the skills to be able to navigate those waters, to be able to stand up in the face of um, struggle, in the face of um, anti-Semitism? in the face of religious suppression? Will they have the courage to stand their ground, to leave home if they need to, to fight back? For Jews, there's this custom that we should say 100 blessings a day. The rabbis teach us that we should say 100 blessings a day. We say a blessing every time we eat. We say a blessing when we get a new piece of clothing. We say a blessing when we see a rainbow. We say a blessing when we see a king or a queen or a president. There's a blessing for everything. And for a Jew to stop at every given moment and to just be thankful, to acknowledge that we're blessed. That's something that's so core to who we are. So we do have holidays that celebrate thank thankfulness. Of course, Hanukkah is one of them. But so much more than any one holiday, it is a part of who we are. It's a part of what it means to be a Jew, to live a thankful life. If Thanksgiving can be a spark that allows us to bring a little bit of the Hanukkah light into um, a Jewish person's Thanksgiving table, then that, that's a gift. The challenge is what happens after that spark is ignited? Are we able to, to nurture that spark? Um, that's something that we take really seriously here at the school, that every child has a spark. And our job, and Thanksgiving is a tiny, tiny piece of that, is to nurture that spark and to help it grow. That's the real work of engaging people in religious life. For whatever reason, uh, Thanksgiving has never been a big part of my own practice. I think maybe it's because I'm a vegetarian and tofurkey just isn't as satisfying as a real turkey, maybe. Um, but as I think about this year, I want Thanksgiving to be a more meaningful part of my family's life. Because we're Jews and because Hoda'a, Thanksgiving, is such an important part of who we are, we're constantly talking with our children. I have three daughters about what they're thankful for, 
It's an important part of our lives. But I think that this year on Thanksgiving, on Thanksgivinga, um, we're also going to be bringing the story of the pilgrims to our table. And we're going to be renewing our connection to how blessed we are to be in this country at this time in history. That's something that I've never really celebrated to the extent that I think I will this year. And so I'm, I'm very thankful to Thanksgiving for that.